is Tavish Hill. I go by Tavish Hill 2003 on the interwebs. <clears throat> um, don't really have much experience with programming, so I kind of came in fresh uh, as far as programming goes, um, which I think was kind of the target market with this. I kind of do co-do stuff in my free time. Uh, I started it as soon as I... Uh, well, as soon as it came out, I heard about it before it came out. I follow a pretty avid gamer, so I follow gaming uh, releases and whatnot pretty closely. Um, when it came out, and I guess it was July, early early July, uh, one of the first things I wanted to do was make a... I used to play baseball, so one of the things I, I wanted to do was see if I could make a baseball stadium. Um, that was one of the first things I did. Started, you know, kind of making just a field and see how nice I can make the field. Then I got bored with it, so I started to build a stadium around it. And uh, that's kind of what sparked my interest was that I went in there assuming that I would be a lot more limited than I ended up being. Um, I guess a little bit of creativity can go a long way. So uh, that's basically how I got into it. Um, and I what... spent almost probably 80% of my free time in the summer on it. So I spent a lot of time on making various Kodu levels and whatnot. But I kind of always been interested in the, in the process of, of game design. Um, Never enough to try to, you know, trudge through a, a C++ class or anything as, as dull as that. But as far as the um, kind of the art design and all that kind of stuff, um, and just in general kind of the design of how you make levels and whatnot, has always been fascinating to me. So it was cool. It was a neat opportunity to get something for, well, I think it was like five bucks or something like that to... Uh, you know, to play around with and see what could be done with it. And I was I was somewhat interested in, in, in something like Little Big Planet in the past, and I was a little disappointed that it was only two dimensional. So I kind of wanted to uh, see what could be done as far as like when you actually get to sit down and actually get a program thing, see what sort of challenges would pop up, and see what sort of things people would normally have to deal with when designing a game. And Coda was an opportunity to kind of toy around with things and see what kind of stuff and problems popped up and see how to, you know, get a little practice and getting around it. And I was like, okay, this is fairly limited, but, you know, the first thing I think of when I see something like that is, okay, well, how can I, how can I break this or that, or how can I get around it, and how can I, uh, how can I not let it end up being as limited as it, as it seems? Because I, I like to try to be the, you know, someone who will, who will kind of break the mold a little bit when it comes to, you know, if it comes to designing stuff. If I can find something that, uh, one of the things that, um, I got pretty good at, uh, over the summer with spending so much time with Kodu was, uh, the level design specifically, um, and with making things that look kind of pretty and whatnot. And the way that I started doing well with that was just by seeing what, what I can and cannot get away with as far as glitching, you know, objects in the game or whatever, and see what kind of cool shapes you can make. And, you know, take a fence post or whatever and see if you can make it look like a person or a giant squid or wherever the heck you feel like. Um, so I think, you know, it, it's kind of a double-edged sword. It sounds, you know, yeah, it's limited, but on the other hand, if it, if the more open it gets, you know, almost, it's almost like the least interested I, or the less interested I get in it. So I, I'm more interested in trying to find creative ways around those, those problems hmm. or those limitations. So it, it starts out a little bit where I'm just playing around. Like one of the first things I would do is, once I figured out one way to, of glitching something, like like a good example, probably the best example is <clears throat> like the fence post or wall nodes or whatever you want to call them. Um, if you put them all the way down on the ground and then you move move the uh, the terrain underneath it that it's that it's sitting on around, you can actually really mess up how the geometry distributes itself. Uh, which is you know if you do it, play around with it a little bit, you can actually make some pretty interesting looking uh, uh, little whatever, pretty interesting looking 3D shapes with it. So I started out just playing around with that, um, messing around with the terrain, and then I just happened upon that as an accident. And then <clears throat> after playing around with that a little bit and just keep on trying to distort it as much as possible and see what kind of cool shapes just happen to kind of arise out of it, um, I kind of, after that, you kind of build off that by thinking, I would think to myself, okay, well, I need something like this in my baseball field or whatever. What can I do to... You know, what sort of thing can I glitch to uh, to make it maybe see if I can make that happen? And then, you know, maybe 50% of the time it'll actually give you what you want. 50% of the time it won't. But even the times it doesn't, it'll give you something else that's interesting looking. And then you kind of just kind of file that away. And after you've done enough things, you can start 
not having to uh, not having to uh, I guess brainstorm as much. You can uh, just kind of think about, oh, well, I did something, you know, a few days ago that looked like this. I could probably use that here and just change the color, and all of a sudden it's something else. Maybe it's a trash can now or whatever. So it's kind of a little bit of both. It starts out, you know, just playing with stuff, and then after that it turns into, uh, after you've done that enough for, you know, a few days on end, basically, uh, you eventually kind of get a little bit of intuition about it, I guess. I'm very I'm very much in the school of thought that it, atmosphere can, can uh, overcome a lot of, a lot of other issues people have with games. Um, an example of, 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 in my opinion, would be something something like a Final Fantasy game or even a Resident Evil type of game. The Japanese, in general, developers over the years have been really good at this. They've been really good at taking, um, <clears throat> taking very, very good art direction, very pretty scenes, um, and taking control, making linear games, taking control away from the player, which normally would lead to... Um, less i guess less interesting gameplay hmm. but overall still they may take away a little bit of gameplay here by making it more structured or more less freeform or whatever but at the same time if they're giving players a certain aesthetic or atmospheric appeal um those players are going to get more involved in the story more engrossed in the world um and they're going to oftentimes they'll enjoy the games a lot more and um, that's something that um western developers are finally starting to figure out with you know companies like bioware making mass effect or dragon age or whatever um whereas the japanese have been doing it for a while hopefully someday the japanese catch on with their uh, <laughs> the rest of their their open world type of stuff instead of just making everything so linear but you know things like that uh go a long way with me personally so i'm going to assume that other people will uh hopefully feel the same way about anything i put together it kind of depends um with the you know the baseball field, I, I made a little home run derby game with it as well, which is I don't know the the, uh, the process with that one was just I want to see if I could make this make this and make something that looks kind of cool visually looks kind of cool because um, there doesn't have to be a whole lot of a you know the basic gameplay things that I was seeing out of people in that first week were were pretty were pretty basic, <laughs> um, which I mean Kodu in general is gonna be pretty basic, but especially early on you know, I kind of got what I expected there so. I felt well if I can make something basic and then just build something really cool around it, that should be pretty, pretty, inter- you know, pretty uh, attractive to people. So that one, I kind of went in knowing a little bit more what I wanted. Um, then there was the thing with uh, with I was uh, where I was talking to Halo X about the working with him a little bit on the uh, this little um, I don't know suspense thriller horror type of game, you know, where I was. Just like, he just showed me something, and then my idea was, oh, well, maybe I can just do something that looks even cooler than this. Just let me prototype it, do a little level, and then from there it kind of built on. Um, and we really just built, uh, for that one, I really just built levels that I thought were cool and interesting. And then we're kind of working at, working out how to build gameplay on top of that and a story and whatnot on top of it that makes sense. And then went from there. So that one's a little bit of a mixture of, of a couple of different schools of thought on how to design stuff. Um the RPG was almost entirely thought out on paper beforehand. Um, that's the sort of thing where you kind of... I, I think a lot of people who are, work at Kodu or who are, you know, in their 20s, a lot of us grew up with things like Final Fantasy. And if we're hardcore gamers, there's programs out there like RPG Maker or whatever where at some point most of us probably would have uh, toyed around with the idea of maybe making a little two-dimensional, you know, sprite-based RPG in a system or on a, on a, on a, in a program like that. Um, so a lot of us already had ideas, you know, I already had ideas about, Oh, well, this would be cool to do in an RPG to structure it like this, blah, blah, blah. So that one was already kind of on the back burner from, you know, a decade ago. And so I kind of had a little bit more to go with and a little more structure. So I kind of fleshed that out on paper first before I got too far into it. Um, I don't know. Some of the other stuff I've done, <clears throat> help people make little levels just here and there um it's usually it's usually a just a collaborative brainstorming process where they have an idea of what they want they kind of tell me what they want we just kind of go back and forth with it until we get it all hashed out um there's a lot of there's a lot of prototyping and there's there's probably more prototyping actually in um in in the gameplay department than anything else because um um uh, no, nah, I don't know. The only advice I would give is um, try to think outside the box. 
if you think that there's something you would like to do and you don't see a way to do it or no one's ever done it before, don't just assume that it's not possible. Try to figure out, try to line up, write down, figure out what your, uh, what the hurdles are, what the obstacles are, what's you know going to keep you from doing it and try to find ways around it because – 90% of the stuff, whether it's level design or whether it's gameplay programming or whatever, it's a lot of, you know, all this stuff sounds as on the, on the, on the, you know, on the outset, um, there's a thousand things out there that people come up with that aren't in Cody's core design. So if there's something out there that you, you know, you, you want to do, try to find a way to do it, try to line up what your problems are going to be, what you're going to encounter and try to figure out ways around them. And, uh, yeah, play around, be creative, think outside the box a little bit.